In this video, we would like to calculate the de Broglie wavelength associated with a macroscopic object. And the macroscopic object that we're going to use is the great Jamaican sprinter Usain Bolt. Mr. Bolt set the world record in the 100 meter dash with a time of 9.58 seconds. He did this in 2009. We also know that he has a mass listed as 94 kilograms. Using that information, we want to calculate the de Broglie wavelength. The first thing that we need to do is to calculate his momentum during this particular race. And to calculate the momentum of a macroscopic object, we use the formula P equals M times V. Now, to calculate his velocity, Recall that velocity is distance per unit time. The distance that he ran was 100 meters. And the time is 9.58 seconds. So using that, we see that his average velocity during this race was 10.438 meters per second. We also know that his mass is 94 kilograms. So with these two pieces of information, we can calculate his momentum. So we have 94 kilograms times the velocity, which is 10.438 meters per second. Multiplying those together, we get that his momentum was 981.21 kilogram meters per second. Now that we have calculated his momentum, we can use the de Broglie relationship, which tells us that the wavelength associated with an object is equal to the Planck's constant h divided by the momentum p. We recall that Planck's constant has a value of 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Also recall that we have just calculated Usain Bolt's momentum during his world record run as being 981.21 kilogram meters per second. Now we need to simplify this expression and convert it into a distance. Uh, if we simply manipulate the unit part here, so it's the parts of just the, the whole numbers, we get a value of 6.753 times 10 to the minus 37 power. But we're still a little bit in doubt as far as the units go. Well, let's just put the joules here in a different color. So we'll put this in a red. And let's write out explicitly what the units of joules are. The units of joules are kilograms, meters squared, per second squared. The rest of the units that we're going to need, we have seconds in the numerator, and we have meters per second and kilograms in the denominator. So we have kilograms, we have meters per second. In the denominator. So now we need to simplify this expression to determine the proper units for our answer. We notice that we have kilograms and kilograms and we can cancel those. <clears throat> we have meters squared and meters so we can cancel it as meters squared and meters units of meters there. We have seconds 
divided by seconds gives us second squared, second squared, so all the units of seconds will cancel. If you don't see that, you can see that second squared times inverse seconds, this gives us seconds in the denominator. We have seconds in the numerator, so those cancel. So all the units of seconds will cancel. And we're left simply with units of meters, which means that our final answer is 6.753 times 10 to the minus 37 meters. Now that is a correct answer, which we've done correctly, but it doesn't give us physical insight into the problem. A useful comparison is the actual diameter of a proton, so it's a proton, has a diameter of about 10 to the minus 15 meters. So this tells us that the wavelength, the wave that's associated with a macroscopic object like a world-class sprinter running the 100 meter dash is far, far smaller than the diameter of a proton. This is a distance which is so small that we can essentially consider it to be zero. That tells us that we do not see quantum mechanical effects for macroscopic objects in the real world. We'll see in another calculation that if we do a de Broglie calculation and we get wavelengths that are more on the order of magnitudes of the distances between atoms. So if you see something on the order of 10 to the minus 10 meters, that is the distance between two atoms in a molecule. So if the distance is at least that or larger, then we actually will see quantum mechanical effects. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one. Have a good one.